can we get really candid today? Have you ever been with somebody just because you didn't want to be alone? Why is that the case for so many people? I want to unpack that in today's video, so stick around. Hey everybody, my name is Yancy and welcome to my channel, Chasing Yancy. You can find me on all the socials as Chasing Yancy and I especially invite you to follow me on Instagram because I give you updates there about everything that you need to know. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for checking me out. Like I said, my name is Yancy and each week I drop videos about emotional intelligence. I teach people how to have self-discipline so that they can start to live the life that they've only dreamed of. If this isn't your first time here, well, thank you for coming back. I so appreciate my faithful subscribers. You guys mean the world to me. Now, before we get started on today's video, please take a moment and hit that little like button. That lets YouTube know to go ahead and push this out to more people. So make sure you're not just sitting there like this, taking it all in because I know it's juicy stuff. Just take that moment, hit that like, and then we're going to get started. One last thing, please hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified every time new content drops. If you hit the notification bell, you will be alerted on Tuesdays and Thursdays when new videos come out and you'll be notified when I go live on Sundays. All right, guys. So are you ready to unpack why so many of us are afraid to be alone? I know that I can relate. I often refer to myself as a hopeless romantic, but I always felt like there was something a little bit off because I didn't feel happy unless I had a partner in my life. For me, a partner served as validation and I didn't realize that on a deeper level. Having somebody else love me made me feel good, but the problem is is that you can't control another person. It wasn't until I began a journey of self-discovery, which is why my brand is called Chasing Yancey, it's trying to figure out who I was, but once I figured out who I was, I could then love myself and receive love from God that allowed me to feel complete. That is the biggest reason most people are not comfortable being alone. I suggest you watch the video that I did about do you love yourself it will really help you to break this down and unpack a lot of the cliche words that people use like self-care and self-love and really figure out if you are loving on yourself. Now you might think, well, I don't have an unhealthy desire for a partner. So I just want to clarify just because you want a partner, that's not unhealthy. I think it's very natural. And I think that when we long for things, it's the Lord's way of letting us know that that's out there for us. Or you might refer to it as the universe. The universe has it in store for you. Therefore, you have that inkling in your mind that this is something that you need to have in your life. The problem is, is when it turns into suffering, when the desire turns into suffering, when you feel like you cannot enjoy your present state until you have this thing that is suffering and it's not intended to be that way. If you feel like you are suffering without a partner, you are more susceptible to being with a partner who is not a good match for you. Now, it's one thing to be with someone who you're not compatible with, but it's entirely another to be in a toxic relationship. And if you don't know if you're in a toxic relationship, watch this video, <laughs> Signs of a Toxic Relationship, Signs of a Toxic Partner, something like that. Anyway, just follow the link. When you are desperate for a partner, you will act out of scarcity. A scarcity mindset is one that says, I don't know what else I can get. So I'm going to at least take the bird in the hand. When you're truly comfortable, you can have a bird in the hand and say, this ain't the bird I want. I wanted a canary and I wanted a red one. This is a blue jay. So I'm going to let it go because you trust that there is enough out there. There is not scarcity. There is plenty for you if it belongs to you. Things in life should come to you without sorrow. There should not have to be a catch. I hesitate to use the word easy because not all things come easily, meaning you have to work for them over time, but it should not come with sorrow. There should be no downside to it. Blessings should be just blessings through and through. If you're with a partner that you're not compatible with, you're wasting time 
and you're not enjoying life the way you could be. Now, I'm not speaking about people who are married because you've committed to God and, you know, there are other ways to get through your relationship. But my God, if you're just casually dating somebody, let them go if you're not compatible with them. And certainly if you have a toxic partner, get away. It's normal to have regular problems in a relationship, but there are some things that have crossed over into the area of abuse. And like I mentioned, if you don't know what those signs are, look, a lot of people were raised in homes with toxic parents. You saw toxic relationships all around you. So you started to view that behavior as normal. And I'm here to tell you, it is not. And unless you've experienced something otherwise, you will not know what good love feels like. If you have a scarcity mindset, you're often willing to lower your standards. And I don't just mean your standards on what you're looking for in a partner. I mean, you're willing to do things that you normally wouldn't do. There have been a lot of people who have made very poor decisions because they were scared of losing a partner. And as I talk about in all my content, if fear rears its ugly head, run in the other direction. There's a difference between wisdom and prudence and fear. Fear compels you to make decisions that don't serve you long term. A lot of times women especially will give of their bodies before they're ready. A lot of times men will spend far beyond their means because they're trying to impress a girl and they don't want this awesome woman to slip between their fingers. I've heard countless stories of girlfriends and guy friends who spend months and months with a person that just doesn't do anything for them and they've wasted precious time. Now, yeah, they have the title, oh, I was someone's girlfriend, I was someone's boyfriend, but they could have been spending that time so much more productively. They could have been furthering their education. They could have been working on a business. They could have been spending time with friends and family. God, they could have been doing anything else other than wasting their time with somebody that was not furthering them towards a goal or filling a need. I truly believe that there is a partner for everybody who has a longing for a partner. And I believe that there is a divine time when you're going to meet that person. If you have a sense of scarcity, you're not going to rest in the fact that there is a time and a place that you're going to meet your person. You're going to be anxiously looking every single day with your head on a swivel, trying to find that partner. Rest assured, knowing that if you have a desire so great, it will come to fruition. Your job is to move through life with gratitude and expectancy. Prepare yourself for your dream person. Really think about it. If somebody said to you, you are going to meet your dream person in six months, what would you do? Maybe you start to lose some weight. Maybe you learn how to cook. Maybe you'd get that traveling done that you've always been putting off. Maybe you take that course that you've been wanting to brush up on. Maybe you'd start that business you've been thinking about. The point is, do not hold back when it comes to your life. Start living your life to the fullest and trust that your person is out there. Stop being afraid to be alone. Learn to love yourself and love your company and enjoy this time. This is a time of amazing growth. And the irony is you need to learn the lessons that life is teaching you right now so that you can be the best partner for your person when they come. If this video has been helpful for you, please hit that like button and let YouTube know that this is the good content that other people should see so that they can push it out there into YouTube land. If you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe and be sure to click the notification bell so you could be alerted every time I drop content. I drop new videos Tuesdays and Thursdays and I go live every Sunday night at five o'clock Pacific Standard Time which is seven central, eight Eastern. In keeping up with the tradition of commenting, if you've made it to the end of the video, here's the question for this one. What is your favorite activity to do when you are alone? Hmm, that could go sideways. Okay, keep it PG, okay? What's your favorite activity to do when you are alone? Let me think of mine. Hmm, besides work, because I really like what I do, what do I do in my downtime? I really enjoy a good documentary or an unscripted drama. Um, I like to watch people and see how they interact with each other and how they think. It's really fascinating for me. I also enjoy working out and pretty much anything being creative. But let me know in the comments below what you enjoy doing in your spare time.